First we're going to start off with the basics of MVC4. Here we have the model, view, and controller. The view is highlighted in blue because that is the main part that we're going to be looking at. However, the UI design is not just limited to the views. Models can also have attributes that control the views, such as required, string lengths, and other custom attributes. Controllers can also have attributes that control access to the view, like you can allow anonymous to certain action results, or you can require logins to secure other parts of your controller. Here we have some of the MVC4 basics. You have your CSS, your JavaScript and jQuery libraries, and then you have an additional JavaScript or jQuery libraries like Knockout, Modernizer, and so forth. The Cascading Style Sheets is a preferred method over inline styles for their reuse. This is also helpful because you're not doing one-off styling for elements within code, but you can have consistency throughout your web application. Also, jQuery can reference these for any of the elements to provide click functionality or any other kind of functionality that you are trying to identify an element with. Other parts we get into are JavaScript and jQuery libraries, and jQuery is the default for MVC as the, the de facto library. Having jQuery within your MVC also enhances the user experience, opposed to just simple web form post back, very vanilla type of website. Other things you can do to enhance your web application is add other JavaScript and jQuery based libraries, and these include Knockout, Modernizer, and jQuery UI. These three actually come with the MVC4 template, but only Modernizer is actually turned on by default from within the layout page. Layouts in MVC are much like master pages in web forms for ASP.NET. This is a common template that is used throughout your web application. This uses placeholders to define areas for content from view pages and you can actually define your own custom placeholders aside from the ones that are provided for you from the MVC4 template. Many layouts can exist within an MVC web application and these are defined by the view start areas within the root or an area throughout your web application. So in other words, you can actually have a layout defined per area if you'd like, however that would probably be overkill as you want to try to reuse as much code as possible and having different layouts for every single area is probably not a good idea unless you have a situation where you have a web application that uh, anonymous users are accessing everything in the root and then say for instance you have an area defined as a member section and you wanted their user experience and their look and feel to be different then that way you could probably have a different layout However, you could probably just get away with having a different menu to keep all your styling the same. Views in MVC4 are different from traditional web forms where you actually had a code behind. Here, the views contain the HTML, JavaScript, and Razor code, and then displays a model passed from the controller. Here, we want to try to keep things as clean as possible by instituting the dry method or don't repeat yourself. We also use partial views wherever we can, and then also we use custom JavaScript libraries to assist us in user experience within the view itself. Partial views in MVC are much like user controls within the ASP.NET web forms. Here they contain reusable HTML, JavaScript, and or Razor code. This also eliminates duplication within views. If you use content more than one place, you want to make it into a partial view. This does not require a model to render, unlike templates, however you can provide a model to a partial view if it is different from the main model of the parent view page that is calling it. And like I said, this is similar to user controls within web forms if you're used to that. So getting started with the basics of an MVC setup, in particular for design, you would go to File, New, Project, and then select MVC4 Web Application, change the name of whatever you want the project name to be, click OK, and then here you have several templates and you can download more templates, um, but for MVC that we're going to use, we're going to go ahead and select Internet Application 
and then choose Razor as our view engine, and then go ahead and say OK. To save time, I've already set up a, a brand new project, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. I'm just going to file, open, project solution, UI. So what you get with a default MVC4 template, which is different from MVC3 and web forms, is everything is laid out slightly differently. We still have a global ASAX like you would find in web forms. However, you notice we don't have any default pages within the root of our web project. One of the main things where all the views are, and these are that display the JavaScript and HTML, they're all sorted by the controller that they belong to. However, the exception to that rule is, is shared. While there can be a shared controller, usually in your default MVC4 templates, you will not have a controller that goes along with the shared folder. This is a default folder that MVC4 creates that contains the layout, which is our master page, and a couple other built-in uh, display templates for error and your partial login. So some things to note, If uh, we'll just give a quick tour around where things are at within your MVC4 project. If you're new to MVC or if you're coming from MVC version 3, um, they did move some things around on you. So we'll just go through those. So alphabetically, we'll just start with the app start folder. This is a default folder that is created by your MVC4 template. Within here, you have your authorization configurations, uh, bundles, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, your filters where you register global filters and so forth, uh, routes depending on how you want to uh, dissect the route configuration if you want uh, the controller action then ID or if you want the ID to come first uh, here's how or here's where you would define those custom routes um, and of course if you're uh, new to MVC4 we now have a web API uh, and you can play with that configuration there as well so let's go back to our bundle configuration and what this is, let me go ahead and open it fully. This is uh, designed to pull in uh, and bundle together CSS and JavaScript files for you. Um, so you can make a call within your layout page or on individual pages if you just need to query your CSS on a one particular page and not across your site you can refer to these script bundles by just calling uh, the tilde slash bundle slash jQuery in this case and when you call that it's going to pull in any version of uh, jQuery uh, that it finds .js. Another example here's jQuery UI and here's jQuery for validation. Um, modernizer is uh, defined here and that's actually already pulled into your layout um, or your master page. Um, and here we define the CSS, and here is all the CSS for your jQuery UI theme. So it gives you kind of a good idea of how to add your custom JavaScript files that you can uh, get, get into your web application because you want to do the same thing. However, in my experience, some third-party tools like from Telerik or their new flavor of Telerik products called Kindo, they are not... Uh, not really happy about being bundled in with everything else like we're doing with jQuery. So those might be exceptions to your rule for bundling. While you can still bundle all your own custom JavaScript libraries, some third-party tools may not bundle correctly, so you're just going to have to kind of still call them the old-fashioned way uh, from your layout page. Okay, so that was our bundle configuration. Um, the next thing on our list that we want to look at is um, down under content this has stayed the same um, however now they provide you with the base jQuery UI styles within here uh, the site CSS is the same uh, controllers you still get the account and the home controller uh, nothing new there uh, filters uh, it does come with simple membership now uh, which is kinda cool uh, so you don't have to go to the net and uh, find, find uh, how to implement that it comes built in um, with the internet application version of MVC template, it should specify that. Uh, images or images, uh, models, it just has the basic account model uh, that goes along with the simple membership. Uh, scripts, this is all of our good uh, JavaScript that uh, comes along with the, the project. Right now, the template's been updated to uh, jQuery 1.8.
which 1.7 was kind of the major release. So 1.8 just has a couple extra goodies with it. Uh, it comes with jQuery UI. And also now it comes with the jQuery unobtrusive for Ajax and its validation. And you'll notice that there are no Microsoft.ajax JavaScript files here now. And that's because uh, Microsoft has now fully supported uh, jQuery. And that's why you only see really jQuery here, opposed to having a couple of jQuery files alongside uh, Microsoft Ajax JavaScript files. Um, also here we have Knockout, which is included, and then also Modernizer. Now Knockout is a MVVM, or Model View View Model, JavaScript engine that assists uh, the UI or within our views of kind of keeping track of uh, elements on the page and kind of linking them together like a text file that's linked to a span uh, that's displaying the first name as you type in the first name in the text box it'll change it on the fly for every keystroke uh, within that span so uh, Knockout has some really powerful stuff way beyond that simple example but it's included but it's not turned on by default or referenced uh, by default in your layout page um, okay so the last uh, section or folder that we're looking at is the views um, and again uh, each of these views with the exception of shared actually matches a controller um, up here so we have account we have account we have home we have home um, so that's how that layout kind of works and within shared uh, we have our layout page which is kind of like our master page as I mentioned before from ASP.NET web forms so in here you can see how we're, we're calling our, our style bundle there. Uh, here we're referencing uh, a bundle for Modernizer, which it only has the one file in there, but uh, nonetheless, that's how you reference that. We have a uh, partial being pulled in. That's a, that's a partial view that's being pulled in. Here we're rendering a section called Featured, um, and so we can, we can call that uh, from any of our views saying you know go to section featured and it's going to stick it right here in between our HTML. Um, there's a render body that's that's the same as before and then again down here one of the newer things that it's doing now is it's rendering the scripts uh, just before the body tag uh, for jQuery and this is kind of where you want to do that if you can if the JavaScript isn't required to be in the head uh, or in the head tag depending on what you're doing like modernizer for instance has to be in the head tag for it to work properly um, and last but not least here's a section that's being defined called scripts so anywhere in your view if you have your own script block uh, you can shove it in a section called scripts you know automatically render out after the jQuery is called in this setup right here so one of the last things we, we've looked at all our folders, but one of the last things we're going to look at is the global ASAX. Um, we already looked at the bundles that are up under the app start folder. So global ASAX is kind of the last thing to look at. If we were looking at other things like, you know, if we want session start or, or, or other methods we want to override, this is where we would do it. Um, here we're referencing all the configurations. Um, later on when we get into doing browser detection, we'll revisit this. Uh, so we can actually add mobile detection to it as well.